What's up everyone, Steve here again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. If you've been following my channel, you know what this guy is. This is the Double D, uh, was originally brushed uh, electric crawler. I converted it to a, to the Toyan four-stroke single cylinder uh, motor. And it's working fine, but I have so many, um, I get a lot of questions, and I would like to do this video, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. So as you can see, it's pretty much, well it's not, completed 100% obviously but I have connected to the lights and all that kind of stuff and that's one of the reasons why I actually chose this particular body it just looks scale and you just get much more room to you know fit all the components in there because at the end of the day when you start fitting two batteries in there and a big gearbox and all that kind of stuff and fuel tanks and all that kind of things it it actually disappears quite quickly and that's why I can't have the interior in there without cutting up about a 90% of it. So I'll answer, I've, I've wrote down a list of all the questions that I've got, or compiled a lot of them, and um, we'll, uh, we'll dig right in. Now the first I have on my list is regarding the exhaust or a snorkel. Um, now a snorkel might be a little bit too difficult to do, just because also I haven't got that much time or uh, that much expertise in fabricating something like that. But I have put into an air filter on there, just a simple uh, nitro air filter, nothing uh, too crazy. But the funny thing is, the inlet here, it's like an oval, so things don't. Uh, so a lot of these round silicon ones slip off here really easily. So if anyone knows, if anyone, what manufacturer has like an oval shape silicon? Can you guys let me know? The exhaust, that will get done eventually. It's just a basic. Uh, well, I can use the one here. This is another, another exact same model as that, ready to be put in something. But the exhaust is just there and it just screws onto the end. Simple as that. So, yes, I will do a, uh, an exhaust in the future. I'll get a little pipe bender and I'll just find some pipe and I'll run it down the side. I think it comes out on the rear, left rear on the real Defender. Now, the weight of this model, a lot of people ask me about the weight. Total weight with, you know, these two batteries, the body and everything on is about just over five kilos so just say five kilos so that's quite heavy the body alone is about 1.3 kilos because it's hard body it's got you know a lot of accessories details and opening doors all that kind of stuff and it's got a, a real tire at the back so just over five kilos in weight now this is you know you could change it for whatever you could have the parts laying at home but what I have here is um, a fair bit of parts here now as you can see you got a toy and that's the FS100 motor, the same one just there. That's a four-stroke single-cylinder uh, nitro motor. Pops out around about 80 or oh, 8 cc or something. I think something like that. I'm not too sure exactly. Just under um, one horsepower. I think it's about 800 c. I'm not too sure how you rate that, but anyway, that's what it is. This is a golden jewel, I think. Uh, trying to find a gearbox that works with this, and Dennis. Um, he helped me out with that because I saw his videos and he's using a Revo 3.3 gearbox, two speed with reverse and the brake linkage because that is the big job or the big task with this because yeah you can get a gearbox but you need brakes. So the the Traxxas one here is it's got everything included in there. It's really nice and easy to work with. So I use that and also a Revo uh, drive shaft as well. Fat drive shaft now I'll just disconnect these lights so I can separate it from the body so as you can see there so that's the tractor uh, drive shaft as you can see telescopic it's really fat as now the front one here that took some that took some uh, yeah trial and error it's just mainly because of the the angle of that shaft now I managed to rotate the whole axle up to limit this limits that kind of angle so use a sit straight like that and I just kind of tink it up a bit so it's not as excessive but that there is from a, a, a Remo hobby car and they're the Traxxas copy uh, pretty much a Traxxas copy or a clone so I'm pretty sure you could use one of them and that fits perfectly now and it works really good does not bind whatsoever so I'm really really happy about that that took some time and uh, some head scratching and some uh, yeah, some, I think some swearing, but uh, yeah, that wasn't fun. <laughs> but um, okay, what else on my list? The double E, yep, so that's the crawler. So the double E, that's a 1 8 scale crawler. It comes out brushed. It's pretty cool, 
pretty cool truck and good value for money. If you haven't seen the video, check out. Um, I've done a, I've done a few videos about that one, and it's, I, I think it's a pretty cool bang for buck car. And it's one eight scale. And as you can see, the amount of room that you need. Yeah, that's why I'm one eight scale. Now um, you need batteries, obviously. Now the Toyan recommend a 3S uh, LiPo to power up the starter mechanism. So you know that's a starter, and you need like a NiCad to run your servos. Now I have four servos in here, a standard uh, size throttle and, and brake servo, standard size uh, steering servo and two micro servos, one for this little switch here and one for shifting into uh, forward and reverse. Obviously you need a radio and transmitter. I'm using the Noble, uh, Flysky Noble, it's a fantastic transmitter and also paired up with the uh, receiver which is I believe yeah it's a four channel receiver so that does everything that I need it now let me just go through some other things okay the weight I've done um, horsepower yeah we talked about that the fuel I run a 20% um, with a 16% uh, synthetic and caster mixture I think it's 10% synthetic 6% caster uh, the run time to get out of that tank is probably around about 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes depending on how, how long you thrash it and how, and how rich or how lean it is the temperature on uh, measured down here in midway on the block is around about 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the interior, yep, I can't fit that in there it's because these standoffs, that's where it mounts. So there's one there, one there, one that's cut off for the fuel tank, and one that's help supporting, as you can see, I run a zip tie through it, help supporting that servo. So it's pretty much non existent. And this whole uh, transmission it just sits high so you have to cut so much out of it that'll be pretty much no point in um, actually doing it um, yeah so that's that so I've got a lot of questions so that's a lot of the lot of the questions that I have and hopefully it answers a lot of them would I recommend it yes absolutely if you can tinker and you have parts or you just want to I guess burn some cash because you know it's not it's something that's you know unique and doesn't mean it's going to work. Um, I've just managed to get a lot of these things to work, and I'm actually quite surprised on how well it does work because it does shift into into second. I was worried that the motor wasn't going to rev high enough because it is a four-stroke; doesn't rev as high as one of those 35,000 RPM revving two-stroke single, um, well, you know, normal nitro two-strokes. And but it does shift because you, the good thing about the Revo transmission is you can adjust the shift point now. If you want to see how this thing works and actually drives, check out my other videos. I'll link them down below as well. It's it's really good. I'm actually quite happy with it. Better than I expected. Um, apart from the trans, the drivetrain on the uh, the quarter itself, all the diff and everything's they're all stock, and the actual uh, links and the springs and that's how it is all stock from the factory. I haven't changed nothing, but I did need to support uh, the chassis in several in several space in several places you know I've got, a, I've got one here I've got one here and obviously you need to make up your own chassis and gearbox race kind of like an L bracket hanging off the side of the stock C channel and there's a flat plate up there to sit the motor on and that's pretty much it a lot of uh, these are speed holes <laughs> um, a lot of you need obviously you know hardware and all that kind of stuff we'll not have that lying around part of uh, not chucking stuff out when you get new kits or old kits you kind of you kind of accumulate a lot of um, a lot of equipment that you can use for this now when you buy this motor you get uh, the motor and you have to buy the additional like the starter kit it includes the starter um, this little servo tester the glow plug the actual the ignition for the glow plug the actual starter unit itself that all is here now and a fuel tank, so you get the fuel tank. Where is it? You get that for the plug. You get some fuel tubing. There's the starter mechanism. That is it, the actual name for it is the starter Toyan Propo. I think there's actually a new unit where these two units are in one. So that's for the uh, that gives the uh, glow plug the ignition, and this one is for the starter. That's what's got the three little brushless plugs that plug into that brushless motor but I think now they have one that's all in one unit because what I had to do you piggyback them up and you solder them all together 
see obviously two reds, two blacks, and then once it gets power, that's it. Now once it starts, it doesn't keep sending uh, well power to the glow plug. It just stays uh, hot and ignited because of the um, combustion. So I don't have to worry about it. It's not sapping juice all the time. It just cranks it over, gets it um, heated up, started, and that's it. So that's everything that you get. Oh, and there's your little servo. That's the starter. That's what's hooked up. Just add to that servo. I'll show you in a minute. I'll just give it a quick test and show how it works. Now, a lot of people ask about the clutch and the clutch bell. Now, you buy that from the um, website as well, Engine DIY. Now, there's several different clutches and clutch bells. That's just, this is the clutch I'm running. It's on their website as well. I'll put the link for that. And it make it obviously you got to. There's no from factory. That's how I uh, a lot of trial and error, but uh, that mesh is right on the money. And uh, yeah, that's, but that's the fun of doing these things, you know, experimentation, experimentation, and uh, breaking a few things and just having fun. And I definitely have had fun with this particular model. It's, uh, it's definitely tested my um, RC abilities, that's for sure, and uh, trying to put things together. But what I'll do, I'll quickly plug this in, in case some people haven't seen it. You obviously want to plug it all in. There's no fuel, really. It might just crank over. That's already connected. Now, I have it set up to starter on this little switch here. There we go, I'll clear the other gap. Everything works. Break. It's out of gas, pretty much. But that's it, so I have it all, all hooked up on this starter. Either side, doesn't really matter. Pretty cool, eh? So you can choose any platform you like. You don't have to use this. You can use any gearbox or anything like that. But Dennis um, has helped me a lot with uh, with the gearbox. I'll link his channel, and I've also just made it work as well. Now that's why I chose this one eight scale uh, double E crawler. Not just that because it looks bloody cool, and when you put the body on. It took some time, but once it got everything on and sorted and all that kind of stuff, it actually fit really well, like like that fits right in the middle. It's not on properly, but it's uh, not screwed yet, screws from the bottom, but it fits on perfectly. And um, that's another say, uh, question, does it get hot in here with that? No, the temps are the same with that on or off the body, and there's no melting of the plastic up there anyway. So I ran it for a full tank with that down like that, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. But that's another reason why I like this body. You know, you can access stuff. You don't need to actually take it off um, to refill it or change the batteries. You just open the door, plug it all up from in there, and vice versa. And you can get to the um, you can get to the fuel tank as well. Open that door, lift that up, put it down, close it up, and you're ready to go. So that's why I chose this body and. Um, it's cheap as well, and it's, it's actually a pretty decent crawler for what you get. Oh, and yes, I know it's not a perfect crawler. It's not going to be like a brushed or brushless crawler. It's an experiment. It's something fun. It's going to rev a little bit higher than a, you know, than a, uh, obviously than an electric counterpart, but it's fun, so I don't care about that. Now, I have another one here. Now, I still need to put this into another car. Any ideas, guys, um, what it might be? I'll give you a little clue what I, I wouldn't mind doing. That's a one, what's that, a one fourteenth truck? It's like a Tamiya clone. Maybe I can put it in that. No, I can't fit it in that because it's too much, uh, not enough room. But imagine it in the truck with a three-speed gearbox. Wouldn't that be cool? That, like, it's exactly like the Tamiya, Tamiya farts, farts, Tamiya parts fit on that. So imagine fitting that into a truck with a three-speed gearbox. But the thing is, no, no, um, no reverse and no brake. So maybe I can do a hybrid with reverse. I don't know. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's long. Oh, hang on. What the most important part? I didn't tell you the cost. 
the cost of all this, okay? Now let me just run it through quickly. So the motor, well, so the, the Revo gearbox depends. You might have one. I didn't have to buy it. That was $100. Australian, you know, the drive shafts, I think they're about $15. Uh, the Remo Hobby one I had that lying around, probably just say $15, round it up. Uh, the Toy and motors around about $230. These are all in, Amer in, in American. And the starter kit was $50. The clutch bill was $25. You know, the 3S LiPo and the Nike, you might have that lying around, but I'm just going to say 50 bucks. The crawler, if you wanted to buy that kit, that was 315 at These are all current prices. Two servos, I don't know, I'll just say 50 bucks. Two micro servos, let's just say 20 And if you want to run the Flysky, for example, that's about 180 So just over 1000 bucks US, if you want to do it like this. Just, that's rough. You might have the kit already, you might have the motor. you obviously going to have batteries generally. You might have... Two of these servos lying around, so it saves a lot of money. I'm just saying, if you want to do it from the get-go, just it's going to be over thousand dollars US, easy, you know. And these are currently on special at that price as well. So, just just giving you an estimate, and uh, yeah, so over thousand bucks. But that's it. Any more questions? Please leave them down below. Any ideas on what I should do with that? Do you like the idea of putting it in that truck? If you do, comment down below. Um, I don't know, 114th truck or something, just so I know how many people are interested in doing it. But if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel, hit that little notification bell so you get notified of all the good stuff. And also, um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. So thanks, guys. Boring video, not too uh, exciting, but uh, it gives you an uh, overview, a rundown, and a lot of uh, questions being answered. So cheers. Have a good day.